What's up? It's Vizos of Julius here and uh, yesterday I was live on Instagram and I asked all of you what you want to see from me in terms of tutorials and a lot of people were saying they have struggles with blending images together. So what I did, I promised to make a tutorial about how to blend complex images together because sometimes when you're blending images in Photoshop you might have a lot of differences in highlight levels and it's just like super hard to figure out how to make the composition look perfect. So in this tutorial we are going to focus only on that so without further ado let's get into it. And now you can see that I've moved here to Photoshop. You can see my image settings here. So I have 4000 by 5000 pixels and that's what I use always. So that's my canvas size. But basically I have this shot that I took in the Dolomites in Italy. And then I have this lighting shot that I took in my hometown. And if you check this shot, you probably, if you understand anything about Photoshop, you already understand that this sky will be pretty hard to plant here because this image was taken during the day and this was taken during the night. But I'm trying to simplify how to do it in the quickest and easiest way possible. It's a bit destructive way, which means that if you mess something up, you might have to start it over again. But this is the fastest and easiest way to do it. So let's get started with it. So the first thing what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to get rid of the sky. And I'm going to select it with the quick selection tool. You can select it from here or hit W on your keyboard. But basically, I'm just going to select the sky. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to invert this selection, Control Shift I on my keyboard. And then I'm just going to hit the layer mask icon here. Of course, you could just select the foreground and then hit that so you don't have to invert selection. So, yeah. But basically now if you want you can refine some of these parts here i'm not going to do it now because i'm just trying to prove a point here so if you want to remove those just grab a brush and uh do this so just with a black brush you can brush here and get rid of all of those spots okay so now i'm gonna move this sky here i'm gonna hit ctrl t on my keyboard and I'm going to move my sky somewhere to the right position here i'm gonna resize it a bit by holding shift if you are in the newest version of photoshop you don't have to hold shift anymore because they changed it but for some reason i haven't updated to the newest version yet but pretty much that's our sky you can see that it doesn't fit with the foreground at all and mainly the reason why it doesn't fit is of course the colors the lightness levels and then the highlights here on the mountains and this is a pretty crucial part because it was taken during the day so the sun was shining to the mountain so you can see shadows and then you can see highlights and there's no way that the sky is casting so much highlights and shadows here to the mountains so what we have to do we have to kind of burn the mountains with the burn tool here and this is pretty easy to do but it's destructive which means that you have to start it over again if you mess it up so what i'd recommend doing is duplicating the original layer here first so i'm gonna hit ctrl j on my keyboard so i will duplicate it and then i'm gonna get rid of the smart object just clicking and hitting ok so now what we have to do we have to grab our burn tool so you can check the burn tool from here or just click o on your keyboard so if i'm at brush i will just click o on my keyboard and that will bring the burn tool to me and now what i'm gonna do I'm going to select the range here. So we have to do this in three different parts. You have highlights, midtones and shadows. And here you have highlights, of course, the brightest parts. The midtones are something in between shadows and highlights. And then the shadows are these dark parts. And usually how you want to burn this to make it look like it was actually taken during the night, you want to start from the highlights. And uh, the exposure determines, of course, how strong the effect is. So usually I start with like 50% of exposure for the highlights. And what I do now, I click the original layer off and I just start burning the highlight parts. And remember to just touch the highlight parts. We don't want to burn anything else. And I think the 50 is a bit too much. So I'm going to bring it to 25. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to brush to all of the highlight parts. And you can see that it nicely starts to remove the highlights. And be careful that you don't overdo it. Because if you overdo this, then it's just going to look extremely weird. So if I would brush here, you can see that it kind of like burns all of the highlights away. And we don't want to do that. We have to keep some of the highlights in order to maintain some kind of realism in this shot. 
and uh, yeah so now what I'm doing I'm just quickly resizing my brush uh, by holding alt and my right mouse button and then dragging and just quickly going through the whole thing and remember you have to get rid of these small things uh, small parts here if you want to but I'm not gonna do it now because it's gonna take a long time and uh, yeah now pretty much when we have gotten rid of most of the highlights here you can see that it starts to look a lot better already then I'm gonna grab the midtones and for the midtones I'm gonna lower my exposure a bit and now if I brush here you can see that it kind of makes the whole mountains a bit darker so this is the point of the midtones I'm just gonna make it darker and this also adds a tiny bit of contrast there which is extremely important because during the night it has to be like kind of contrasty in my opinion so now you can see it starts to look extremely good but it still misses some contrast so with the shadows what we're gonna do I'm gonna lower my exposure even more and now I'm just gonna brush here so now this adds a nice contrast to the mountains and uh, because we have the lighting on the sky we can maintain some of the highlights here but let's not overdo it I'm just gonna click here probably add some more shadows there and there so now if we compare to the original one you can see before and after and that's the power of the burn tool so you definitely want to start using this burn tool if you haven't already and remember to do it in three parts first highlights then midtones and then shadows okay so now that we are done with that i'm starting to plan this so first of course we have the grass here so what we have to do we have to decrease the saturation of the grass because during the night you don't like see that many colors so in order to blend images perfectly you have to always blend the foreground according to the sky never the other way around so always blend your images according to your sky so now i'm just gonna hit the hue and saturation here if you don't have this panel for some reason just come up here to window and then hit here adjustments and then you will get it there but yeah basically i'm in hue and saturation now and i'm gonna clip this so what clipping means it clips it to the layer below and it's only affecting that layer so now if i would play around the colors you can see that it kind of messes up the whole image but what you can do you can just clip it from here and then you can start to decrease the saturation so here you have this hand if you click that and then hit the image you will get the color here and now i'm just gonna decrease the saturation and you can see that this already starts to blend it pretty well so now the mountains look quite similar to the grass here and the lightness here determines how bright the effect is so i'm basically gonna take it even a tiny bit more down and here you can play around with the color if you want to you can try to make it a tiny bit more blue but i wouldn't recommend doing that now so yeah that's before and after the hue and saturation the next step is actually to add some color here and you want to add the color once again based on the sky so i'm gonna hit color balance i'm gonna clip this and then I'm just gonna add here you also have shadows midtones and highlights and it works in the same way that the burn tool so just select the midtone so it affects quite a bit of everything so I'm gonna add some blue and voila that's how you blend I'm gonna add some silence here just a tiny bit and now you can see that this nicely blends together with the sky it's not perfect yet but you can see that it's not really that hard when you know exactly what you're doing and if you think that the mountains are still a bit too like uh, not not enough contrasty what you can do you can just hit the contrast layer here clip it increase the contrast and uh, increase the brightness a bit and then what you can do you can hit ctrl i on your keyboard which inverts this mask and then you're gonna hit your brush and then hit X on your keyboard to play around with the colors here or if you have let's say you have red there then you would hit just D and that will like reset the colors but basically with white color and with the smaller flow here you want to brush onto the mountains and that way you will get more contrast to your mountains but yeah that's just another way to play around with it and uh, that's it and then what we have to do we have to add a curve so blending curve is extremely crucial in order to make all the tones and lighting levels to look pretty much the same so what i'm going to do i'm going to hit curves here and in the curves here on the left corner you have blacks so if i lift this up it's going to open all my blacks here if i bring this to the left we have highlights 
so it's gonna make all our highlights brighter and of course it's gonna make oral highlights darker if I bring this down and here again highlights midtones and then shadows so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna make the effect on top of everything I'm gonna lift the blacks a bit and here we have the histogram so from the point where the histogram starts to go down you want to make a point and just bring it down a tiny bit and then increase the contrast so now that's a blending curve and it nicely adds a tiny bit of fade into your image it's a really subtle effect but it's super important and now what you can do you can add another color balance here and now you can add it here again to the midtone so this is gonna add a nice like final tone on top of everything and that's it and then if you think that the sky color is a bit too strong of course now we have blended um, the foreground according to the sky we haven't made any changes to the sky but if we want to we can add a hue and saturation here and once again we can decrease the saturation we can increase the saturation but here i'm just going to decrease it a bit so now this fits pretty well in my opinion here and only one step left to do and this is super important in order to make your image look a tiny bit better so think where the light comes from here the light comes from the uh, lighting itself lighting strike itself so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna make a new layer and here from the layer styles i'm gonna put this to overlay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hit d on my keyboard to deselect the colors i'm gonna pick my brush and then select the white color so i'm gonna select that layer and uh, here the flow put it to like eight percent or five to eight percent five to ten percent actually and now what you're gonna do you're gonna brush some light Actually, I'm going to put that even lower. So now what you want to do, you want to think where the light comes from and brush some light there and then just brush some light overall to the whole image. So and remember to do that with the small flow so you get the most realistic look. But pretty much that's how I would blend these type of images. So you can see this really like finalizes the blend. And that's it. So let's check our before and after. I'm just quickly going to move this under here. I'm gonna group all of these and then let's see the before and after. So before and that's after. And that's how you plan in Photoshop. I hope you learned a lot of new things from this video. I know it was a bit more fast paced, but of course you can always watch this later on again and uh, implement all of these techniques into your own work. So yeah, I really hope you understand blending a bit better now. Just remember, it's not that complicated when you know the right techniques. Remember that the burn tool is extremely efficient and then remember to always do it in three different parts. So highlights, midtones and then shadows. And also always blend your images according to the sky. So blend your foreground according to the sky to get the best results. And remember to add the curves color balances and hue and saturations to play around with your toning and remember that during the night you don't have that many colors so always think what is your setting in the image if you have a day image of course then you're gonna have highlights you're gonna have shadows but if you it's taken during the night you don't have any kind of moon in the sky or anything then it's gonna be a lot different so always think what is the type of setting and uh, plan it according to that so yeah thank you so much for watching this video and if you want to learn more in-depth techniques about my work i just released a new course which is called the glowing way photo composite course and in that course i teach like literally everything about my workflow in terms of like artistic images so if you want to check that out, the link is down below in the bio. But yeah, I'll see you next time. And now it's time for me to catch a plane because I'm about to go travel again. So yeah, I'm super excited for that and I'll see you later.